Hello, I, Sugadan Varloth, welcome you to this lecture on turning moment diagrams. In this topic, we recall the forces acting on the single slider crank mechanism of a steam engine. Recall the crank effort or turning moment equation that we had learned in the last topic. We see what is meant by a turning moment diagram and also find out what are meant by the fluctuations of energy on a turning moment diagram. Coming to the single slider crank mechanism of the steam engine, we find here a force Ft acting perpendicular to the crank making it rotate around the axis passing through O. The product of this force Ft or the crank pin effort and the radius of the crank R will be given by the torque. The torque is the product of Ft and R. In the earlier topic that we had learned, we had found this equation for the turning moment or the crank effort acting on the crank and the crankshaft. Further, we had modified that equation to this form where T is the turning moment acting on the crank and the crankshaft. Here in this equation, we find that the torque value is dependent upon one variable theta which is varying with the crank rotation. Theta is the angle made by the crank at any instant with the line of stroke of the piston. Therefore, we find that the torque is a variable dependent upon theta. As theta is varying from 0 to 90 degrees, 180 degrees and 360 degrees, value of torque also, also will be changing accordingly. At the instant when theta is equal to 0, we find that the value within this bracket is equal to 0 and therefore the torque also will be equal to 0. Now as theta is increasing, we find that the torque also will be changing or increasing. Now if I plot a graph of the varying torque taken on the y axis and angle theta in radians on the x axis, then we get a graph like this showing the variation of turning moment or torque. This graph is called the turning moment diagram. This turning moment diagram shows the variation of turning moment for one cycle as seen here. One cycle here is one rotation. Now let us examine what is the area below this curve representing. Now we find that on the y axis we have the value of torque and the, on the x axis we have the angle rotated by the crank. If I were to take this angle in radians then we have this area being obtained as a product of turning moment and angle in radians. This product is nothing but work done which we had learned earlier in this subject. So we understand that any area below this turning moment curve is giving us the work done onto the crankshaft of the engine. The work done by the working fluid or the steam on the crankshaft. Now if you were to consider the total work done in one cycle, it is represented by the total area below this curve. If I were to consider that the same amount of work also we, was being done using a constant torque, that torque is represented by the mean torque. Which means that if I take the constant torque being applied for one complete rotation, the total work done will be the rectangular area below this mean torque line. Now this area has to be equal to the total area below the turning moment curve. The mean torque also has got another significance. It also represents the mean resisting torque on the crankshaft which is rotating. As the crankshaft is rotating, it is being resisted by the frictional force in the bearing and therefore there is also a torque tending to 
retard or resist the rotation of the crankshaft. Now, the net torque acting on the crankshaft will be the difference between the applied torque T and mean resisting torque. Now, this net torque, which is the difference of the applied torque T and mean resisting torque, will be the accelerating torque acting on the crankshaft. If the value of this is positive, then the crankshaft will accelerate and therefore the angular velocity of the crankshaft will keep on increasing. And the value of this is negative, then it will de be decelerating or retarding and therefore the angular velocity of the crankshaft keeps on reducing. Now, if we see it in this curve, we understand that during the period of rotation of the crankshaft from O to P, the applied torque is always less than the mean torque. Therefore, during that period, it will be a deceleration acting on the crankshaft. And therefore, angular velocity will keep on reducing and therefore the energy of the crankshaft keeps reducing. Now, if I take rotation from P to Q, the applied torque is always more than the mean torque and therefore there is an acceleration taking place during the rotation from P to Q. We find that during this period of rotation, the angular velocity of the crankshaft keeps on increasing and therefore the total kinetic energy of the crankshaft also keeps on increasing. Now again we find within the rotation from Q to R there, there is a deceleration and therefore a shortage of energy. Now again we find for the next part from R to S there is acceleration, there is deceleration. Now we find that there are certain periods of rotation of the crankshaft during which deceleration is there and other periods during which acceleration is there. During that period when the acceleration is there, the kinetic energy keeps on increasing and during the period when deceleration is there, the kinetic energy keeps on reducing. So, the total energy processed by the crankshaft is fluctuating or the, there are fluctuations of energy taking place during part rotation of the crankshaft. Now, sometimes this fluctuation is positive and sometimes it is negative, which we call as a shortage of energy. If I examine it in another way, in order to keep the energy of the flywheel constant, we have to apply a minimum energy represented by the rectangular area here that is for the rotation of the crankshaft from point P to Q whereas what we are actually applying is the work done represented by this total area here that means more than this rectangular area we have an excess of energy here than what amount of energy need to be supplied now if I take rotation from Q to R, we have to apply an energy represented by this rectangular block to keep it rotating with the same energy. But actually what we are supplying to the crankshaft is only a smaller energy represented by the area below the curve. Therefore, we find that whatever area is contained within this loop is a shortage of energy. Therefore, the total energy of the crankshaft will be reducing during that period. And here we find that for the next period, again, there is a surplus of energy represented by this loop. And for this part of rotation, there is a shortage of energy. These surpluses, shortages of energy on the crankshaft are what are called the fluctuations of energy. So, this turning moment diagram can also be used to see 
what the fluctuations of energy taking place on the crankshaft where the steam is doing work onto the crankshaft. Now we will learn further that the fluctuations of energy are creating the variations of speed on the crank and therefore the variations of speed need to be controlled. In our left, next topic we will see how to keep this variation of speed created within certain limits so that too much uh, variation in the speed does not take place. Thank you.